Thank you, Olivier. And thank you to all the organization as well. Uh, it's a pleasure for us being here. So we hope you find it interesting. Uh, at the end of the, of, of the talk, please uh, ask any questions will be available for you at the QA. As Olivier said, we come from the Catalonia CERT, which belongs to the Cybersecurity Agency of Catalonia. Let me see if I'm able to move. Uh, all right, so this is us, uh, Juan González, CERT manager at the Catalonia CERT and Alberto Magallón, head of IR and threat hunting too. Uh, basically, we like to, to make the most of the, the situation just to, to send some shout outs to the rest of the team and, and to the agency too which uh, participated in, the, in, in this incident we are gonna be talking about today and also in the making of, of this presentation. Uh, uh, this presentation that you can see here is based on, as, as we are saying here in this little disclaimer, based on true events. Last year we suffered a pretty, pretty intense incident uh, for us, uh, which affected some, some hospitals. Um, We've been modifying the, some names and dates uh, for the sake of the TLP. Uh, just a quick disclaimer to uh, no Harris or Harris samples were harmed in the handling of, of this incident. We just found the, the, na the, the naming of the presentation fun. And then we realized that <laughs> there's a, a ransomware name like that. So, uh, and yeah, finally, sorry about the, the skills or the, the PowerPoint and, and the paint skills. Uh, it's not well, what we like. Most we prefer other technical things. Uh, yeah, so basically, very quick introduction. Uh, we are the Catalonia CERT, a uh, governmental CERT, uh, which works inside the, the uh, Cybersecurity Agency of Catalonia. We are a governmental CERT for the whole uh, government of Catalonia. We take care of, of the whole government and its infrastructure, but we also cover uh, a wider a scope like going from local administrations to public institutions, all the public dependent sector from the, the, the government, also universities and research centers and, and whatnot, and finally uh, hospitals too. Uh, so as I was saying before, we are gonna be talking about an incident uh, we had to deal with last year. Uh, it was just in the middle, just after, after the, the first lockdown we, we suffered here in Spain. So basically it affected several hospitals. Uh, it also escalated. So it uh, ended up almost affecting part, a, a large part of our infrastructure. Uh, at some point it, it did indeed feel like entering the, the underworld. So everything seemed to, to start collapsing and, and it was quite a nightmare for, for, for us. Uh, the incident itself, uh, it doesn't cover like crazy capabilities. We were not facing a really advanced actor, but still uh, we had to deal with, with many different factors. Uh, it was quite complex. And, and that's something we want to, to highlight. That's something wh where we think that the value is, is, is from, from all this. Like uh, we had to, to deal with a lot of stakeholders. We'll be talking about that, but we were just wanted to, to reflect that. And some of the most, some of the, the key points or the, the schema we are going to be following today. So basically we're going to be talking about the, the incidents timeline, talking about who it affected to, the challenges we, we had to face, which mistakes we, we made, and, and also some, luckily, some, some successes we, we had. Uh, yep, and as I said, the, the most important thing from us would be to, to be able to transmit what we got from, from it all, all, all the value we got out of it. Uh, just uh, a quick introduction on the on the interface, the user interface we're going to be using today. So basically, uh, you're going to be seeing like different slides with uh, a different uh, reference to, to what it is about. So we might be talking about successes, mistakes, challenges, actors, what was the mood of the day for us in, in that precise moment, and how we how we evolve and walk the, the, the path. So yeah, with no further ado, uh, please, Alberto, Go ahead. Thank you, Juan. Make it sign. <laughs> then the incident begins one day where we detect an actor who is publishing an access to a hospital in Spain. We initially suggest that he may be in Catalonia and we work with that hypothesis. The actor says that he knows that it's a hospital and even so he has no problem about selling information. He knows what uh, that means. 
the same expert statement also sells the credential of a wagon manufacturer. And in this case, our success was to monitor the sources and identify the initial stage of the incident. Uh, so a little information about what we managed to find out from the actor. It is Siberian spider, a name we made up because our name in this game is a lot more boring and we love put others to it. Uh, the Siberian spider actor is a cyber criminal opportunist with enough experience more than 10 years in the underground forums, not this very advanced, but he has certain capabilities. Also in 2020, we have seen him participate in other incidents. He has got a lot of activity, some of the famous incidents. Uh, based on that announcement, one, once identified the challenge we face is to identify which hospital may be affected. In the constituency, we have 68 centers, eight of reference. And in the announcement, there is only a little information about the technologies and some numbers, such as the number of computers and, the, and servers. For example, uh, we don't have integrated hospitals or we have invisibility in all of them. So it is a problem for us. So what we start is, is to do is, is prioritize the main candidates and start contacting them to carry out a, a series of hunting tasks. The next success uh, we have is, is to able to identify that, that hospital. With very limited and simple hunting mission, we managed to identify that one of that hospital had been compromised throughout a, a 3D Citrix system. In this case, we will be talking about the first victim, the first hospital, which will be one, one of the large hospitals in Catalonia. And that indeed, during, during the pandemic, we will have, have a, a huge impact for us. So uh, we are managing this for about 13 days to get the main part of the investigation out. And that at first we thought we had it content, even eradicated. If it is true that it was not until later that we realized that we made a series of mistakes with the full scope and it was not a, a complete eviction. We didn't make a full scoping and it was not, wasn't a, a complete eviction. Meanwhile, after 14 days, uh, we realized that precisely a Swiss bubble manufacturer, which also includes the credentials in the advertisement, we know it has impacted with ransomware. So we know that the credentials have been sold and we are very close to it happening to, to us as well. Uh, so, uh, 16 days later, uh, when we are up with the, this concert, uh, we detect an alert completely different from that of the hospital. It is a Mimikaz alert on a domain controller that it may make us think that there's a, there has been a lateral movement. At, that, at this time, we are working with the hypothesis that it may be separate and related incident because we have a different alerts at different sites. Also, we do begin to consider that the two incidents may, may be also related. Uh, this alert is generated in a uh, tax office, also in Catalonia, with a certain size. And 40 minutes later, in a totally different environment, we again detect another alert, also related to dumping credentials. So at this moment, it is obvious that there is a lateral moving through different environments and that someone is dumping credentials. In this case, the second alert arises in one of the domain controllers of a regional government where we will be talking about 200,000 users and part of the 60% of the domain can support by the infrastructure. Here we have three incidents and we start looking for the common thread and we identify that is, it is the same provider that manage the, the free environments. From here, we discard the hypothesis that they are independent incidents and we begin to relate it to the first incident. We have almost 17 days ago in the first hospital. So here we can state that it had been a second actor that has both the uh, credentials or that uh, he's trying to expand in his scope or prefer he have the entire, entire provider's infrastructure compromise and the actor is entering through it. At this time, we introduce a, a second actor who will be our provider. 
we have called him uh, an intention, an intentional provider, where this basically basically has at the end, or we discovered that the practice that we being carried through to manage infrastructure were not exactly the best or, or most hygienic, as they should be ideally. In the end, uh, there were many environments, many domains with credentials and network visibility that allowed you to move or jump from one to another system. The typical IT administration errors that compromise the, the security. So we are fa faced with many challenges in this point, a situation where there is no real segmentation, retention is often typical, is insufficient, obsolete systems. The, provi uh, the provider is very large. It has many environments. It is almost easy for the attacker to move down for us because we have to deal with many people because the systems are owned by many different people. In the executive committees, there are, there are more than 80 stakeholders that we must be dealt with, different points of contact. And it is a great task to explain to everyone and, and to be agree. Uh, deal with nervous and pressure from so many points. And also to add to that, we have the participation of an incident response team from a large manufacturer who, with whom we also have to coordinate in the right way how to work together, also making our criteria prevail. Uh, the business is very concerned about what has happened with the credentials, which is true. We share the this concern, but it is also true that we continue to have an active attacker moving through the network. Sometimes it's even difficult to target what has happened. The team responsible, responsible for calculation the risk, its conclusion is that the risk is low, which ends up affecting us by needing to gain leverage or restraints in the management of the incident. And finally, the liaise that enters in the incident, which means in addition to all this, managing this communication. Another good thing about what we managed to do in this incident is to detect lateral movements, especially by following the trail of the attacker, identifying the tools he used and the command and controls. Uh, with this, we were able to identify new victims, such as a second hospital, in this case a little smaller, but also a reference, so very important one, in another region of Catalonia. And just below, we identify a third hospital, a little smaller, but also important. And even in this lateral movement, it is um, reaching primary care center, also distributed through the territory. What we are clear at this time is that the attacker is jumping from system to system, at, and it's not very clear where he is. He is going from, from system. At this time, we are also aware that we made at least two other mistakes. The provider carries out the commission of the computers involved. The provider shoot down with our consent and with our being informed, and the attacker was using these computers to pivot. And in addition, in the management of the first incident, we also removed some systems that the attacker was using as an operations center. So this made him alert, and it is clearly noticeable that he this caused a change in the attacker behavior and he began to try to establish contact from many other computers and try to deploy persistence with other tools. At this point, uh, and we find ourselves with new challenge to take on, to say when we stop in an environment as big as we can, in the end, much of the infrastructure you cannot ask to be rebuilt. Uh, there comes a time when you have to make a, a commitment. At some point, you have to make a decision uh, start to, to take it. Uh, it was clear when considered at least to apply the fish containment plan. The first most radical action, we have a corporate environment, several hospitals, more other uh, environments, and the least we wanted to do was isolate and secure the corporate part by increasing the, the detection capacity. From there, we continue working on the rest to discover where else it has persisted. We don't interrupt the, the rest of the infrastructure. From here, we do tracking. We apply hunting with a resilient strategy, a mechanism that if it is filed, we, we cover by other techniques. And we were able to find 
all the command and controls and all the connections that the attacker was using. In addition, the attacker tried to hide he tar of one command and control and tar on another. He was not very active. He could leave them off for a long time. He was trying not to make too much noise. He was trying to be a, a little careful. Uh, in addition, at this moment, we, while we are preparing the final eviction, we find another advertisement by a completely different actor who talks about the access to a hospital again. We think that he is talking about hospital one plus hospital two. Then we are back in the first hospital starting situation. You can sell the credentials to someone who wants to deploy the ransomware. Ransomware, in this case, not it's a, a single hospital, but in two hospitals. In this case, we discard the rest of the hypothesis and we are left with the one that we have probably been facing the second actor who was working with the first and, and moving laterally. This actor, this other actor will be belligerent spider, another name, another opportunistic initial access broker. In this case, we were able to identify that there has been a relationship and some type of transaction between them. And he is the, the actor we've been dealing with most of the, the incident. As we already have the eviction plan prepared, only this announcement gives us advance everything and we anticipate the execution of the plan. We anticipate everything two days, putting everyone up and running and in the end, making the cut or the eradication with all the infrastructure that we have identified more a series of very strong restrictions in the, in the affected environment. Uh, what has happened to us at this point, another error that we identified because while we prepared the plan and until we went to execute, we probably wait uh, a long time because we went to execute it well we wanted to have everything under control. It also depends on the requirements of the provider himself who asked us to, to wait. Uh, in the end, what happened to us as the attacker was already alerted in, is the, that they managed to take root in, in many systems. In the end, uh, nothing more, just an, an example or to give an image of how complicated everything has been the paths we travel, the amount of systems, jumps, research that we have to do. At times, uh, it seems that we were going to enter the underworld, but by luck or, or effort, or the hours we dedicate, we were able to, to, re to return among the, the living. At the end of, the, of this incident, we, uh, what we do try is to make the most of it to achieve a positive output for ourselves. In that sense, we managed to apply restrictions on all communications that were unnecessary or already established, reduce the trust uh, relationships between domains or even, even deploy MFI schemes or in increase log retention, improve the operation model with the, the provider and shut down the entry and attackers infrastructure. Here are some key points that Juan introduced us. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you, Alberto. So basically, one, one of the first things we realized was that uh, it was not strictly possible to, to follow the book. So that's something we would have liked to do. But at that point, we realized that we had to adapt. So for instance, Alberto mentioned that we had the, the participation of a, a different uh, team, different IR team. And they were proposing just, for in, in this case, watch and learn. We have to wait. We, we don't want to, to alert the attacker. We totally agreed, but we still had to, had to make an, a, a commitment and, and take a decision because things were going on. We knew that there was being uh, activity. Uh, we also had suspicions that the same actor had sold those accesses to, to a different operator, probably a ransomware operator that had struck a different uh, victim. So, so yeah, the, it, it was like, yeah, we, we know how we would like to do it. Uh, maybe we, we, we have to, to do other things and to adapt. Uh, even we, we went to, to talk to other providers and, and we got like feedback 
and it was pointing to different directions. Some some of them were telling us that, yeah, uh, you should just wait, analyze everything, identify all the activity, all the, the footholds, and then take, take a, a step. Uh, others were just basically proposing to, to try to apply uh, at least those measures that could guarantee that the, the most critical uh, assets were not affected. Um, at the end, well, that, that only reflected that there, it, it was not like a clear answer and, and we had to, to uh, try to identify why, what we should do. Uh, it was also quite important for us to, to have, or at least we identify the need to have like an, a specialized team, someone that knows how this type of environment works and what char characteristics uh, might affect the, the work we were doing. So yeah, that was uh, important for us in the same line. We tried to deploy like a, a cross-functional team. We were not only uh, having like our uh, incident responders and, and forensic technicians there just doing their work. We also uh, had like uh, someone that could take a look at, at the, the, what was going on and take some uh, conclusion, conclusions out of it. So just a bit far from, from the heat of the, the bottle. Uh, at the end, just mixing up some knowledge from the outside, but also from the, the inside, we were able to have like a quite complete picture of what was going on. So, so it, was, it was not only the incident, incident itself, but uh, the actor that was behind it and, and his TTPs in this case. Uh, just to summarize some of the challenges that Alberto has already gone through. So basically, first thing was that this was a, a huge incident for us. Uh, it, in, it involved many different stakeholders from many different businesses. Uh, so the, the first day, as Alberto, Alberto mentioned, it was more than 80 people just in the same meeting, trying to understand what was going on. Uh, they were even proposing how we should be driving and, and make, doing our investigation. So I've read something in some blog, why don't you look in this registry? Uh, but then when we had to, to ask for some action, we were getting like uh, an answer in the sense that, uh, no, we cannot do that because that, that's going to affect the business. Uh, you cannot reset the, the credentials, for instance, because yeah, we are working, re oh, everyone is working remotely and that, that's going to affect a lot of people and it's going to generate a huge impact. So we had to deal with that. It, it was like, we would like to do this. This is what we should do, but again, uh, it's not always by the book that you can play. Uh, in this case, we, we just had to, to adapt and still keep everyone in the, on, on the boat, on the same boat, and just working for, for the same goal. Uh, it was also quite important for all of them to, to keep everyone updated. So at some point we ended up having many, many different meetings. That's something we, we know that we have to try to avoid, like executive meetings, then technical ones, and. So at the end, some of us were just basically explaining the, the same thing over and over again. It was a quite huge, as I said, large and, and a heterogeneous uh, complex environment. Uh, Albert, Alberto already said it. Uh, it was easier for, for the attacker to move around because yeah, th there were this configuration, these uh, links between systems. And when we wanted to, to do something to, to reach some environment, we might found that it was a different point of contact. So we had to talk to, to a different person and, and, and it was never easy. Um, as, I, as we've already mentioned, uh, we had to adapt. Uh, we know we have our processes, but that's something you, you have to, uh, to be able, it, it must be flexible enough to, to adapt to it when, whenever you've already started handling an, an incident. Even the, the containment plans we used and deployed uh, were customized for each of those environments. So one recipient might not work for, for a different one. Like it, it was totally customized because yeah, at the end you wanted to, to kick out the, the attacker. And one important thing too was to whether, how, how, how you decide whether you can close the incident or consider that it is well contained and it, it won't reproduce again. That, that was difficult for us because we knew that uh, having like a final and complete um, knowledge or, or to be sure about it was not going to be a, an easy task. Yeah, and finally, before we end, some lessons we, we took from, from it all. 
in this case, we realized that our capabilities uh, did not scale up. Uh, we were facing like a quite distributed situation or environment infrastructure we were working on. Uh, and then uh, we realized that at, uh, up until that point, we had been de dealing with way smaller environments. So our tool set, our processes were more focused on, on having, yeah, we, we could even follow the, the breadcrumb if necessary. But in this case, it, it was huge. The, the attacker had the, was available, was able to, to move around, to freely move around. Uh, it was not easy with what we had. Uh, also that we depend, at least at that point, we depended too much on others' cap capacities. We were asking for uh, acquisitions and doing, running some tasks by the provider. And we, then we realized that, that that's a problem because that's, that also depends on their capacity. And if they don't do something right, you are gonna have to, to ask for it again. Uh, it's also important to have a protocol or at least a, a, an operational model with, to, to, to be able to work together with other IR teams. In this case, uh, Alberto already mentioned it, uh, we started getting like input from a different specialized team and they, they had the name. So everyone was, was happy with them saying what they thought, that's fine. But at some point you have to, to make it clear that someone has to lead that. And that uh, feedback is very welcome. But uh, if you have to take a decision, that's going to depend on someone. Uh, yeah, we've already mentioned the, the importance of having a, a team that is specialized on a, a specific environment. And, and that's something we, we, we suffer or we went through because it was a hospital. Uh, Alberto has already uh, explained that pretty well. And final point, just that it was a, a quite uh, intense uh, engage. Uh, we had to, to be working during more than three weeks. And we started quite quite heavily, like or, or not, not heavily, but we, we put a lot of, of effort in the first days. And we didn't want to, to burn our people. And that's all. Uh, basically, thank you, everyone. Thank you to the organization. Please feel free to reach us by email or at the QA. We'll be happy to, to receive and answer any questions. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you, everyone.